الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Yesterday we spoke about how kufr or adhru baridatun lil kufr how sins lead you to kufr sin leads you to kufr to disbelief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كُفُرْ فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says like the shaytan who says to the human being ukfur, disbelieve and then when you disbelieve the shaytan says إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكَ I'm free from you indeed I fear Allah there's a story attached to this ayah on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه قال إن رجلا كان راهبا تعبدا يعني في بني إسرائيل ستين سنة وإن الشيطان أراده فعمد إلى امرأة فأجن فأجنها ولها إخوة فقال لي إخوتها عليك بهذا العالم فيداويها فجاءوا بها فقال داواها وكانت عنده فبينما هو يوما عندها إذ أعجبته فأتاها فحملت فزينها فزينها له الشيطان فوقع عليها فحملت فأتاه الشيطان فقال اقتلها وادفنها فإنك رجل مصدق ويسمع كلامك فقتلها ثم دفنها علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه أولاً brothers and sisters I want you to pay close attention to this because this is a vivid example a glimpse at how shaytan takes you step by step by step in committing sin and his ultimate goal is to get you to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the end goal is not just to disobey Allah. The end goal is to make you disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran that He يَدْعُ حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيدِ That He calls His party, His group, to be from the companions of the hellfire. That is what Shaytan wants. He made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a promise that I will come to them from before them and behind them and on the right of them and the left of them and the front of them and the back of them and you will, force, you will find that most of them are ungrateful that you will find that most of them are not grateful so this is the plot of shaitan is to get you to dwell in the hellfire forever along with him the goal is not to just to get you dis to disobey Allah that is not the goal the goal is to get you to disbelieve. Ali radiallahu ta'ala he said there was a man from Bani Israel, Rahib. He was a worshiper, a monk, a worshiper. Some narrations mention that his name was Borosis. A worshiper from Bani Israel. To Abba Allah Satina Sana. He worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 60 years. All he did was worship Allah for 60 years. For Arad the Shaytan, and Shaytan wanted him so bad. Shaytan wanted this individual so bad. And it's not to be amazed that Shaytan could desire one of us, or the Shayateen could desire one of us because of some good deed that you are involved in. They watch you, they see the good that you are providing to people, to mankind, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And they, are, they plot against you to lead you astray. And leading you astray could be through many ways. Could be through making you fall into sin, beautifying certain sins for you. It could be making you believe that you are more than what you actually are and making you arrogant. He has so many madakhir, he has so many ways to lead you astray. But don't ever think 
that for a moment that you are providing a service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation and you are not the bane of shaitan's existence. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, ma ahadun ala al-ard abghadu inda shaitan minni لأنه لا يأتيني بدعة من المشرق والمغرب فأردها فترجع إلى المكان الذي جاءت من عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه he said there's not a person on the face of this earth that shaitan hates more than me عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه he said there's not a person on the face of the earth that the shaitan hates more than me he said, because no bid'ah, no innovation comes to me from the east or from the west except that I refute it and then it goes back to where it came from. فَأَرُدَّهَا I refute it and then it goes back to the place where it came from. So don't think, he said, there's no one on the face of the earth that Shaitan hates more than me. <clears throat> so don't ever think that you are providing a service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation and you are not going to be the bane of Shaitan's existence. He is not going to go after you or come after you in the many ways that he has to come after you. So this individual from Bani Israel to Abd Allah Sittin is in a Fa'aradahu Shaitan. He worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 60 years and Shaitan wanted him so bad. Wanted to lead him astray. Fa'amida ila mara'atin fa'ajannah. So Shaitan went to a woman and he possessed her. Look at the plot, how he sets the whole stage up. Shaitan goes to a woman and he possesses her. Jinn possession or demonic possession is real in Islam. And we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. It's real. He went to a woman and he possessed her. And this woman, she had brothers. So Shaitan came to these brothers in human form. فَقَالَ لِإِخْوَتِهَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِهَذَا الْعَالَمِ هَذَا الرَّاهِبِ فَإِنَّهُ يُدَاوِيهَا Shaitan, after possessing the woman, he went to the woman's brothers in the form of a man. And he said, you know what? You guys should take your sister to that scholar right there. Take your sister to that scholar. And he can cure her of her demonic possession. He can cure her. So the brothers, they went to the scholar and they left their door, they left their sister with him. Cure our sister. So the man, he began to, you know, try to, you know, perform ruqya on the woman to perform some type of cure to get the possession off of her. So they left the door, they left the sister with him. So while the woman was with this particular scholar, trying to heal her from the demonic possession, one day the shaitan just beautified her to him. And she began to amaze him in her beauty. The shaitan beautifies, as I mentioned before. One of the ways that he gets you to fall into sin is that he beautifies. The Prophet Wasallam, he mentioned that if the man and a woman is alone, the third party is the shaitan. But we constantly overestimate ourselves and underestimate shaitan. We find ourselves alone with women. We find ourselves communicating alone, just us and the woman. And then we wonder why we realize we end up in the situation that we end up with. Because you overestimate yourself and you underestimate shaitan. He's always working. The Prophet wasallam he said, no two people, man and woman, are alone together except that the shaitan is the third party. He's always there. Always there. So they left the sister with this particular scholar and as he's day by day trying to cure her, one day the shaitan beautified the woman to him for waqa'a And so she became, he had relations with her. Couldn't control himself and he ended up having relations with the woman. فَحَمَلَتْ And then she became pregnant. 
So here you are, scholar, known in the community as such. And then you have relations with this woman, and then she's not only, not only did you commit Zena, you not only committed fornication with the woman, but she actually got pregnant with, with your child. فَجَاءَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَقَالَ لَهُ اُقْتُلْهَا وَدْفَنْهَا Shaytan comes to this particular scholar in the form of a man and says, kill her and bury her. Kill her and bury her. He don't even realize he's being taken step by step. Shaytan said, kill her, bury her. فَإِنَّكَ رَجْلٌ مُصَدَّقٌ وَيُسْمَعْ كَلَامُكَ he said, because you are a man of, of truth and a man of honor, man of dignity, man of knowledge in the community. People listen to you. People take your word. You can't have this sin spread like that out, out there about you. Kill the woman, bury her. So the scholar, he killed her and then he buried her. ثم أتى الشيطان إخوة إلى إخوتها في المنام فقال لهم إن الراهب صاحب السمعة فجر بأخ بأختكم فلما أحبلها قتلها ثم دفنها في مكان كذا وكذا. So the shaytan he went to the brothers. Look at how shaytan he always abandons the human being in his hour of need. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَكَانَ شَيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا Shaytan is ever an abandon, an, uh, abandons the human being in his time of need. So what does Shaytan do? He double crosses the individual. He goes to the brothers in their dream and he shows them in the dream that this scholar killed your sister, had relations with your sister, killed her and buried her in such and such place. على ذلك الراهب فأتاهم فأنزلوه ثم انطلقوا به فلقيه الشيطان وقال إني أنا الذي أوقعتك في هذا ولن ينجيك منه غيري فاسجد لي سجدة واحدة بس واحدة فإذا سجدت لي أنجيك مما أوقعتك فيه فسجد له هذا الرجل فأتاه إخوة المرأة وقال الشيطان إني بريء منك فقتلوه ومات على الشك. So the shaytan went to the brothers and showed them in the dream that this scholar that you left your daughter that you left your sister with had relations with your sister, killed your sister and buried your sister in such and such place. When, when the brothers woke up from their dream, one of them said to the other, you know, I saw in a dream last night something very weird. And the other brother said, you know what? I saw the same dream. This is not a coincidence. So they went to the scholar asking about their sister. And they finally found out that this scholar had relations with their sister. She got pregnant by him. He killed her and then buried her. As they grabbed him, getting ready to kill him, the shaytan came to the scholar and he said, Inni fi I was the one who set this situation up. I possessed the woman. I told the brothers to bring her to you. I beautified her to you. I encouraged you to have relations with her. When she became pregnant, I was the one who came to you and told you to kill her and bury her. You are a scholar, you are a well-respected man in the community. I was the one who set this whole situation up. He said, He said, and nobody can save you from this situation right now but me. Just prostrate to me one time. 
وأنجيك منها and I'll save you from this whole situation just prostrate to me one time give me one prostration and I'll save you from this whole situation the man prostrate to shaitan the brothers came to kill him the shaitan said to the man inni bari umink inni akhaf Allah I'm free from you, I fear Allah and the brothers ended up killing him anyway and he died on shirk spent his whole life 60 years of his life in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 60 years of his life on ibadah, worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in a split second he prostrated to shaitan believing that shaitan could get him out of the situation <coughs> only to have shaitan say anybody mink in the akhafullah I'm free from you I fear Allah the shaitan is to the human being khadula. He will leave you, abandon you in your time of need. Brothers and sisters, don't overestimate yourself and underestimate shaitan. He is sneaky, he is shrewd, and he has been around for a long time. Has led many a people astray who are greater than who you think you are. We see ourselves to be great. We see ourselves to be strong. We see ourselves to be smart. We see ourselves to be pious. We see ourselves to be this and that. All of what you think you are, shaitan is greater and smarter and stronger and strong-willed and more patient. You name it. Everything you think you are, shaitan is more than what you think you are. The only thing that we have over shaitan is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only thing that we have over him. You think you're smarter than him, he's smarter than you. He can watch you and see you from a place where you can't see him. You think you're more pious, that your piety will protect you from shaitan? There's only a few of us who their piety and their righteousness protects them from shaitan, like Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya Umar, the Prophet وسلم, said, Umar, you never walk down a path except when the shaitan sees you coming, he takes another path. He walks down a different path. But how many of us are Umar ibn al-Khattab? How many of us have the faith of Umar ibn al-Khattab? So everything you think you are, shaitan is more. Don't overestimate yourself and don't underestimate shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانَ كفر. Like the shaitan when he says to the human being, disbelieve. فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ And when you finally disbelieve, قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِئُ مِنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ The shaitan says, I'm free from you. I fear Allah. I fear God. And this is what I wanted to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his best wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and taslim al kathira wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.